Well, hello everyone. So this one's long overdue. You have a channel talking about power electronics, then you have to talk about power factor. Now, most people probably are familiar with power factor when it comes to inductive or capacitive loads because that's usually what most people deal with. For example, running an induction motor can mess up the power factor because it's an inductive load and it delays the rise in current. But when we're talking about power electronics, we're talking about something a little bit different, and that is how the power factor gets distorted because of a nonlinear load, like a rectifier load. So before I go into that, we have to understand the basics of power factor, what it is and why it gets distorted in the first place. So I pretty much assume everyone watching this channel probably already understands alternating current, but just in case you don't, I'll give you a little quick ex explanation. So most people who get electricity from the grid receive it in the form of alternating current. So what that means is the voltage doesn't come out at a steady so um, solid one state voltage. So it's not direct current, it's alternating current. So the voltage doesn't say stay stable at 200 or 40 volts, it's actually moving all the time, changing all the time. So what that means is this, the voltage really starts out at zero volts, say for example, starts out at zero volts, slowly rises up to a peak, and then falls back down again. It goes to zero volts again. Then it changes polarity, goes the other way, rises up, it falls back down again, and then goes back to zero volts. So, if you were to connect this sort of voltage source to a resistor, a purely resistive load, like for example, an infrared heater, then the power factor would be one. And that's because the current of the heater, the resistor, is going to rise at the same time that the voltage is rising. So the voltage and current are completely in phase. So what power factor really is then is a ratio of apparent available power from an alternator or generator to how much you can actually use. So we know right off the bat the resistor's power factor is 1 because it can use just as much as it's given as long as the resistance is set correctly you can use as much power as a generator has to offer or as little as you want depending on what resistance you have but when you're using a different type of load in the case of power electronics like I said we're talking about a nonlinear load then the power factor can get very low could be 0 0.8, 0 0.7, maybe down to 0.5, even lower. But how does this get messed up with a nonlinear load? Take, for example, a rectifier and a capacitor. Most people see this and they think, yeah, this is how we get AC into DC. We run AC through a bridge rectifier, turn it into DC. But it's all lumpy because the half cycles of the alternating current aren't really turned into DC. They're just flipped. One half cycle is just flipped up with the other one, and it results in a really rather lumpy DC. So a capacitor is used to smooth out the voltage. So the capacitor absorbs and releases current in order to keep the voltage stable. But here's the problem. The problem is, current from the line is only going to flow when the alternating current voltage is above the capacitor's voltage. So that means, for the times that the voltage at the line is not peaking, that means current is not flowing into the capacitor. So the current is zero for a long time, and then all of a sudden it jumps up to a very high value, and then it falls down to nothing once the voltage is stopped peaking. This is a big problem, and it means that you couldn't use all the available output power of, say, a generator or an alternator. It's also a big power big problem because it disturbs the sine wave of the power that's being transmitted. Instead of a sine, sine wave, now everybody's getting a square wave. The reason is, is because since power is only being used at the top of the sine wave, that means it's turned into a square wave because the voltage has fallen so, so, so far down at the peak. Okay, so if none of that made any sense to you, I'm just going to show you. So, oscilloscope, obviously, and when I'm Tracing the current and the line voltage and the load is a rectifier load, just to show you, to prove the point. So, goes into the bridge rectifier through the IGBT chopper, 
and that's just to control the IGBT there and the load resistor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slowly increase the pulse width and I'll show you on the oscilloscope how this rectifier fire load affects the line current and voltage. Okay, as you can see, the sine wave, that's the line voltage, it looks pretty good now. And the trace there, in the middle there, is the trace from the current shunt. But watch carefully what happens to so the peaks here and here when I increase the pulse width. So, here it goes. You see how they're not as smooth anymore? It looks like the top here has been flattened off. Now these pulses here are from the current shunt, so you'll notice that the current is only flowing here, like I said, right here in time with this trace here. So the current is only flowing when the sine wave is peaking, so the rest of the time, for this entire sine wave, the rest of the time the current is not flowing, and that's why the top is getting chopped off like that. So now it's nice and smooth, the sine wave, but when I turn my nasty load back on... See, it gets yeah, pretty distorted. Alright guys, and just for reference, this is a purely resistive load, so the heater's connected directly to the line here. And you'll notice, so channel 1 there, is the trace of the voltage, the line voltage, and channel 2 once again is the trace of the current shunt. But you'll notice channel 2 now is almost perfectly in phase with channel 1. So there's not just a big lump coming right out the middle, it's channel 2 is following the whole sine wave. So that's the difference between a rectifier load and a purely resistive load. Oh and guys, I have to tell you this, just in case. If you are going to try to use an oscilloscope to measure the mains voltage, make sure it's isolated first because, yeah, a lot of people end up frying their oscilloscopes, hooking them up to the grid. So if you're not sure about that, I think the best thing to do would probably be either to check first or get yourself an isolation transformer. So you've seen there's a big difference between a rectifier load and just a resistive load. But if you're asking, is there a way to fix the power factor problem with a rectifier load? The answer is yes, there is a way to fix this problem. And how do you fix this problem? By keeping the line voltage above the capacitor's voltage at all times. That might sound like it's complicated, but actually, the answer is to use a boost converter. But we'll explore that in the next video. So guys, I thank you for watching and comment or message if you have any questions.